See, I bought a book to read to you today. Anything is possible, the Eddie Edwards story. But as I was reading this on my way here, I realized there's a lot of things left out in this book. What happened to the part about you turning your back on me? I didn't see that in this book. What happened to the part about your wife leaving you? I also didn't see that in this book. What happened to the part with me powerbombing you on the ramp? <laughs> I didn't see that in this book. And then let's get to the end. You talk about winning championships, but you don't mention being stuck in a nut house. Eddie Edwards, this book is fraud. You know what, Eddie? Maybe one day you'll get out of here. I mean, anything is possible. But maybe on my way home, I'll check on Lish. Because she look a little upset leaving here. I'll do that for an old buddy. Listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans, brought to you by the Impact Lounge, the number one source for Impact wrestling news and discussion. This is Trent, along with my co-host, Kyle. Kyle, say hello to the people. Bah! 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 Did you notice how at the top of this show, Trent, uh, there was no mention of the Thanksgiving episode, no disco, nothing? The, the, The recap went to two weeks ago, as if last week never happened. Oh, dude! Like you know, the thing is, the the Thanksgiving episode is 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 a world of its own, right? It just kind of lives in its own little world. I got, I was gonna, I was gonna bring it up today. Do you think they film the Thanksgiving episode last? You know, what I mean, like of all these sets of tapings, is it the last one that gets filmed? Is it like the one where they're like, all right, anybody who's not on this, go home. You know, you guys can just take off. We're gonna just do this, and we're gonna get it over with. You know, that'll be the end of the, end of the tapings, kind of ended on a big party note. It is what it is. What do you think? It's a good idea there. Uh, I guess that's a question for the Impact Tribe. Uh, anybody, did you attend the tapings live? Let us know. Did they film this last? That sounds about right, though, Trent. Save the fun so. Thanksgiving party for the very end. I think so. And hey, speaking of the Impact Tribe, Kyle, we're going to take it right to the YouTube comments, check in with our Impact Tribe here on the Impact Lounge's YouTube channel, where... Uh, We are hosted first and foremost before it hits our RSS feeds and everybody gets all their comments and feedback in. So we're going to kick it off right here and uh, let's see. Let's jump right in here. We're going to start off with Cardi Nation 420. And he says he was genuinely surprised, but viewership went up like 24,000 on Thanksgiving episode built around one match and a bunch of flashbacks. And he's saying Eli they really Drake and Disco Inferno, man. That's what he says. He says the, they really got to get Eli Drake back in the main event scene where he belongs. Totally agree. The guy does equal ratings. It's also Disco Inferno. Can't uh, can't deny that. Kyle, you left a comment for people to react to, and it says, "Do you agree with Ty- Do you agree with Kyle that Trent should bring the Afro back?" Five people thumbed up that one, so I'm gonna go with. Uh, it seems like a popular opinion so far. Hey, man, uh, uh, you know, I was thinking that. Maybe a lot of people skipped over our Thanksgiving broadcast because, you know, maybe they didn't even watch Thanksgiving Impact that week. I don't blame them. They're busy with family, whatever. I was thinking that maybe you were just not going to bring up the Afro thing and pretend it didn't happen. But I'm glad <laughs> you did, Trent, because in case you missed last week's podcast, uh, yeah, l- let me play a little flashback cl- clip right now. Let me, let me just let me recap the people, refresh their minds, Trent. That is our pal Trent you're looking oh. at right now. In the year 2000 with an afro. Where now, did now, you my, find this? Where did you first, find this? The first question on my oh. mind, Trent, is your hair is naturally very straight. How did it get so curly in this picture? I, was, I, there, was there a treatment you had to go through? Can I plead the fifth on this? Oh, did you put your please. hair in curlers like a grandmother? Like, what happened? Look, look, guys, guys. I mean, look, I, 
They got you know those you know those things at the salon, that little dome that the old the old, old ninnies sit under. You know the old grandmas are sitting under that dome thing and they're reading the paper and they're 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 clucking away about their their bullshit. No way. Oh, the perm dome. Perm dome. So Hell, yeah, perm dome. A, a long story short, uh, we were talking about Disco Inferno because he was all over the Thanksgiving episode and uh, Trent disco went fever. through a disco phase back twenty years ago. Disco I found fever. The this guy, Trent was feeling the disco fever. Oh, I yeah. found the picture of Trent with the afro. We got to the bottom of it, and you're looking at the picture right now on our YouTube. So yeah, that, that oh, is our two weeks, two, two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. Jesus Christ, Kyle! Come on, two weeks in a row. You know, but when we played the disco inferno soundbite to go with it, it's just so perfect. Oh, it was perfect. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you that. I I didn't know you were you were gonna do that in post, and when I saw it, I said actually it was pretty perfect that the uh, that the Song went along with the photo. Disco fever, disco fever, disco fever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, anybody listening to this on the RSS feed, on the you know iTunes, Stitcher, and all that, go to the YouTube for a visual because you'll see a visual on there right now. All right, moving on to the comments, Kyle. This guy says, speaking of WCW, I wish Impact would give Buff Bagwell a chance and pair him with Scarlet or something. He literally deserves a comeback more than anyone. We talked about it before. I think Buff Bagwell would be fantastic. I think he's still he's still pretty young. I think he's just around 50 or under 50. He looks like a million bucks. He was on that Gigolo show recently. Uh, the guy looks great. If anyone could pair off with Scarlet, I think it could be Buff Bagwell. Kyle, were you a Buff Bagwell fan? Did you used to do that little dance that all right, Buff Bagwell all right. did? I'm dealing with a bunch of uh, has-been WCW fans over here. Uh, you know <laughs> what? Disco Buff. Inferno coming back is enough. For a good two <laughs> years, we don't need Buff Bagwell on the show taking a roster spot from a young guy. We don't need that. I love Buff. Buff's <laughs> the stuff, but I don't think we need Buff Bagwell in 2018. Personally, why don't, you, why don't you finish the quote? It's I'm Buff. I'm the stuff, and the girls just can't get enough. That's the quote, Kyle. That's the quote. All right. Anyway, moving on. Lee Poulton says. Oh, Poulton says. High Impact Lounge. The show was great. And Thanksgiving ep- Thanksgiving match was very funny and a good match. Can't wait to see what happens this coming Thursday. And we're going to get right into that in just a second, Lee. All right. Alex responded to our um, our uh, our Impact Wrestling merchandise question about uh, the giveaway we're doing. He's the only one so far who has said anything, Kyle. And I'm going to let you elaborate on that. But Alex says, I'd love a Fala Ba shirt because ba, ba, ba. He goes, LOL, we all know Alex Wright had the best dance in WCW. I don't know. I'm, I'm a disco guy. I'm going to disagree with that one. Alex, that might disqualify you from getting a follow up boss shirt. But, Kyle, elaborate on what we're going to do for this giveaway, how we're working. Since, we, since it came up just now, talk about the giveaway real quick. All right, Trent. So we're thinking here we got to do this a different way because we threw it out there to the tribe. On the wrong episode. We threw it out to them on the Thanksgiving episode. I get it. Uh, they had they had the turkey flow, and they were a little tired. You know, I, I get it. Uh, only one person wrote back. Only one person responded. That's okay. So we're going to stretch this out a little further. Uh, and you know, we're going to be a little – we're going to be generous, Trent. We're not just going to get them one thing. I feel like we should get – me and you should both chip in, or you, mostly you and your, your PayPal Ooh. account. I, I know – I know you and your family have money in oil fields. I know all about it. We don't don't have to get into it. Uh, You know, I I think that, you know, we should uh, have the tribe members send us audio. That's right, Trent. Audio. Send us audio so we Hmm. can play it here on the show. Audio. Yeah, I I think we should have them send us audio through whatever it is, Facebook, Twitter. uh, What about our – do we have an email? Do we have a show email account, Trent? you guys oh, can we send it. Thank you for that. No, we they can send they can email us anytime at impactheads. That's H E A D Z impactheads at gmail.com. You can email us anything. You guys can email us fan letters, love letters, whatever you want. But do the do the audio clip like Kyle's asking for. Keep now, going. If Kyle. you are too shy to do the audio clip, just send us the message and Trent will read the message in his Sammy Callahan voice, won't you, Trent? Absolutely. Sammy Callahan will come in here, read that message. But you guys can also uh, send it to, if you don't have want to do an email, you can also set, add us on Facebook and Twitter at 
type in uh, We Talk Impact. It's the Toll Nonstop Impact podcast. Comes right up. Give us an ad. Message us there. We'll do it from there, too. All right. That's a plan. Let's go with that, Kyle. It's going to be our uh, Impact Smith giveaway. There you go. There you go. All right. Continuing on with the comments. Here we go. Uh, HS, HSG Sabu 66 says, Pass the Dutchie to the left hand side, dummy. Yeah. I guess you liked your song. I'm not passing it anywhere. Miguedro, uh, who says, Miguedro, Mir Neesom, and Alex. All three of them said they want to see a, a video of my collection that you brought up last week. So, Kyle, I'm going to do that video for next week. We'll have it up on. We'll put that on our channel. How about that? And we'll put it on our social media. Perfect. That'll, yeah, I, that'll want, go up there. I want to see that damn DVD collection, Trent. Uh, All right. You guys got it. Hey, listen, believe me, the, the new set that's be up for pre-order right now. So I think it's uh, Redemption, Slammiversary, and Bound for Glory 2018, along with that cool new Impact Wrestling uh, cinch bag. It's out for pre-order. Shipping in January. I'm getting that order, so I'll have that. I'll, I'll have those three DVDs later on too. But we'll now, do. No, a, wait, we'll, Trent, Trent. I got a question here. Are you yeah. convinced that you have every single TNA slash Impact Wrestling DVD ever, or is it just like you have a lot of them? No, I got them all. Every I, single one. Every single one. Ooh. All of them. Well, I think the Impact Tribe is going to take you to task over this, so you better right. better prove it in the video. I'll prove it, man, because the only ones I'm missing are the three that aren't released yet. But I got them all. I'm looking at them right now. I'll have a video for everybody. It'll be on our channel, the Total Nonstop Impact YouTube channel. We'll put that video up there. We'll link it to the And review. don't forget to highlight the three live crew DVD. Uh, your favorite one. I think, I think that was the basis of our friendship, right, Kyle? I think it was the first thing we ever uh, truly shared was me proving to you I own the three live crew DVD. Yeah, I mean, that's how I knew. I was like, this guy, Trent, can cut the mustard. This guy can hang. He's got the three live crew DVD. Like, if I'm going to do a podcast with anybody who's an Impact fan, it better be a guy who owns this DVD. But Damn I'll show right. you guys some gems. I got some gems in there that you cannot, you cannot get anywhere else. But uh, I'll have that up for you guys real quick. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, and uh, McGuedra also said, great show, by the way. Uh, he's become a big fan of us. I appreciate that. And uh, Richard uh, Cartledge says, congratulations on saying my name right. Usually Americans have trouble. Anyway, I think Phoenix should win the X Division title. Uh, Phoenix would be a perfect X Division champion. Listen, who knows? We got some qualifying matches coming up, you know, for the uh, Ultimate X to crown the new champion. We don't know who's, who's going to be. Maybe Phoenix will get a spot in there. We only got a couple of things announced for it so far. So... We'll see where He's, it goes. Phoenix is going to have to get his groin together first for yeah, uh, wins in the X Division titles. Unfortunately, he is injured for the month, but uh, Ultimate X is until next month, so we'll see. We got a little time. I hope he's good for homecoming, man. That's my concern. Yeah, he says just December, so we'll see. We had to pull him off AEW. Um, well, he actually he pulled off. He was going to fight Seidel at AEW last uh, a week ago or so. He had to pull off of that, so Seidel had to shuffle up his match a little bit, but... Which is interesting. Come check this out. Seidel was saying he's like, I don't think I've ever wrestled Phoenix before. I thought I could have sworn they did an impact, but I guess not. But uh, all right, C. O'Connor says Trent and Disco Inferno should take the belts off of LAX. That's my comment of the week. Hundred percent. I would love to do it. Time and place. Book it. Somebody book it. I'll take the belts off LAX with Disco Inferno. No doubt about it. Who wrote that? C. O'Connor. Block his account. No, not at all. It's not like Z O'Connor. He's a big fan. Uh, let's see. Steve Stephen Ewan says, Hey, Kyle and Trent, hope you had great holidays, and I love all the sound bites. In my ass. And my point this week is about the women of WWE versus Impact Wrestling. I love what Impact does that WWE doesn't, is let the women, is, is with the women, and here's my example. They have one storyline, and almost all the women are not being used, but, the, but Impact has five knockout storylines. Taya versus Tessa with a championship story. Jordan Grace and Katarina having their series of matches. Alicia involved in Eddie Edwards and Moose's rivalry. Allie, Kira Hogan, Sue Young, and Rosemary in the Undead Realm. And, and Lady Scarlet's talent shirt, search. Love your review and thanks, Steven. What a great point, Kyle. I never really, like, you know, we, we see it going on, we review it, but I never really think about that. He's right. Every one of the knockouts is involved in something. I think that's fantastic. That well, that's fantastic writing. What do you think? A very good observation from that tribe member. Uh, great booking going on in Impact Wrestling. Everybody's getting something to do. 
they're doing a good job at not letting anybody fall aside. I think I, it's something you take for granted. I mean, we watch it every week, but it's like, man, he's right. Every single woman in the, on the knockout side is involved in something. That's fantastic. So, and awesome just like how we talked about, Trent, the last couple weeks, how it feels like not just the women, but the men, too. Like, they're positioning these guys uh, a certain way where anybody can step up at any moment. Anybody. That's You, you always have to have your next contenders ready. You got to be able to accommodate for if somebody gets hurt, somebody gets pulled, something happens that you can insert the next guy in and have it be believable because it makes sense. So if somebody's, hey, let's say, let's say, God forbid, something happened to Brian Cage, you know, it's like, oh man, Cage is out and he's injured. Shit, what do we do uh, for homecoming? You know, it would be believable to work in Sammy Callahan. You know, like you could work him in because. You've already built the credibility with Sammy. Impact's fantastic at build at doing that. They already got the next level and several levels beyond that ready to go. So that's great. Uh, a couple more comments, and then we'll uh, we'll get we'll get going here. Uh, whoopsie, your boy Whoopsie Long Island's very own Whoopsie says Kira, Kira would be number one on uh, that's on your special list, Kyle. But uh, he agrees that Tess Mocker, just because of her legacy and being a knockout legend. No, you know what, Trent? I got to say, I rethought that list, man. I rethought it. Uh, I, I have to make a switch. Oh, whoa. Okay. No, there's no switches. It's on tape. That's it. Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, now, no all right. So I can't change it, but uh, reflecting on the list, I got to say, uh, the, the impact marking me put Brooke as number one. But the yeah. more and more I think about it, I think Kira Hogan might have the nicest booty in Impact Wrestling history, Trent. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Another uh, a friend of mine who listens to the show came up to me after last week, and he goes, come on, Kira's not number one? What, are you crazy? And I go, hey, well, I'm like, it wasn't me. It was Kyle. Blame Kyle. I just was thinking, you know, Brooke is legendary. She's got the, the legendary behind. It's Brooke Teschmacher. But... <laughs> You know what? I think it's because Kira is so new and she's a rookie. I kind of took her booty a little for granted there, giving her the number two slot. But I, ah, Kira Hogan, that 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 booty is massive, Trent. That, that's got to be the number one booty in Impact Wrestling. <laughs> well, there's no change in the list, but you can uh, you can make a you can make a notation this week. We'll go with that. All right, a couple more. Mir Neesom. And Teresa Frost both said to take it easy on me from last week. You were giving me a hard time last week, Kyle. Holiday week. But they both said take it easy on Trent. It was Thanksgiving week. But Mir Neeson did say the next time I screw up like that, I'm fired. So, well, uh, you know, I've been studying the disciplinary uh, ways of the great Chacha Gama. And I thought I had to, you know, whip your ass a little bit. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relax on you this week, Trent. You've been doing good. You got uh, the heel cast came in here and said, y'all got some twisted taste and booty. Oh, here always, we go with the booty. I always knew Kyle was twisted, but it looks like Trent tripped on acid one too many times during his disco phase. Never done acid. Heel cast guys, I'm a straight edge. Uh, but it does look like I have. Yes, that, that disco photo does look like I have. Uh, tight butts over big butts, 24-7 guys all day, every day. That's what the heel cast said. Thanks, guys. The hippies did acid. The disco yeah. people, the disco people did cocaine. Oh, that's right, that's right, and which I never did either. So let hey. that be known. Let it be known. All right. Uh, the Chris Steele show said uh, they were. It was impressed. It said it was huge that the ratings jumped for the Thanksgiving episode. I think it's the first time there was a jump. That's pretty cool. Uh, new newcomer here, Average Boy says these two are a riot. Thank you, Average Boy. And we're gonna close it out with uh, Dancing Mike because Dancing Mike left us a, a paragraph here. A, actually, a book is what he says. He's been the MVP uh, listener lately. I got to oh. say, he's like the MVP tribe member. He numbered out his points, and uh, when you get to number three here, you'll see why he's MVP. You'll see he's, he's a considerate guy. Uh, number one, Cool Fro. All right, I appreciate that. Um, one, that's one person on my, uh, on my side with the Fro. Number two, good, love the show, good work. Number three, so I think I deserve a gift from ShopImpact.com because – I would choose the Sammy Callahan 8x10 photo for $4.99 instead of a pricier shirt or DVD. What a considerate guy. He's like, guys, just get to spend five bucks. It's good enough. Don't worry about a t-shirt. Dancing Mike, what a guy. All right. 
Uh, Dancing Mike, you also listed number three twice, so this should actually be point number four. He says, I won't be commenting on next week's show, and it's not because I don't love you guys anymore, but I'll be spending next week at Disney World with my wife. We don't have any kids, so I'll be spending my time eating, drinking, and drinking, and drinking. Flap nuts. And I might also do some drinking while I'm at it. The joys of not having to drive for a week. Wish I was there. I'd be drinking with you, buddy. Flap nuts. He asks us here, he says, point number five, he says, have you guys seen Ring Warriors on WGN at 8 a.m. Eastern on Saturday mornings? I stumbled upon it a few weeks ago by accident. A few Impact guys are on there. Austin Aries is the quote-unquote minority owner and the heel and has brought in Killer Cross, and Eli Drake is now a face by default feuding with Aries. And, of course, it's he's hilarious on commentary. Heather Monroe debuted with a win last week, and Gel- Glenn Gilbernetti is on as an occasional commenter and manager of a team called the Slambinos. <laughs> it's a pretty... It's a pretty good show, and they packed quite a bit of wrestling into an hour of TV. Just wanted to put the word out in case that might interest any of you, any of my fellow loungers. And the last point, he says, sorry for writing a book. Keep up the good work, and I'll catch you in a couple of weeks. Kyle, I have not seen Ring Warriors. Have you seen this? I've been hearing about it. I haven't seen it, but it seems like it's impact light. You what know what, described. Trent? Uh, I'm going to be honest. It's one of those things that's, like, cluttering in my DVR that I haven't watched yet. Uh it's just another wrestling show. So much goddamn wrestling to watch. You never have enough time for it. I just wasn't thinking too much about Ring Warriors, but I got to say, I've been sold on Ring Warriors off that description alone. I mean, you said you said Austin Aries. You said Eli Drake. Killer Cross. You said Disco Inferno. I mean, I'm in, man. I'm going to check it out. Well, who's behind it, though? I don't even know who's, like, who's putting all this up. Like, it just it's literally sounds like this is like, an add-on episode to Impact or something. He just described you know, that. Like, you're, you're the Chicago guy. It's on WGN. You should know this. I think it's WGN. your hood, man. I think it's WGN America, which is like a, I guess, a premium. Well, it's not really a premium, but it's like, that. that's not filmed locally. So I don't know where the hell that's filmed, man. I'll, I'm going to do a little investigation on this. Dancing Mike, we're going to jump into this. Kyle's going to watch it. I'm going to start looking into it. We'll figure it out. But we're getting to our primary show, and that, guys is going to be the November 29th, 2018 edition of Impact Wrestling on Pop TV. The show kicked off with the Lucha Brothers, Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix taking on Willie Mack and Rich Swan. High fly match to kick things off. The people were super into this one. What do you think? What did you think about going in this one when you saw the match announced? How did you feel about it? Especially uh, kicking off. You know what you're going to get, bro. Uh, the Lucha Brothers... Rich Swan, Willie Mack, who I got to say, I'm really impressed with. Uh, I think they're a perfect tag team. I would like to see Rich Swan and Willie Mack uh, together as a unit permanently moving forward. But I got to say, Trent, I was disappointed in the crowd because it seems like they were so behind the Lucha Brothers, they had no love for Willie Mack and Rich Swan out there in Las Vegas. That's a tough crowd, man. You're talking like any – it's pretty much like – Anybody against the Lucha Brothers is tough. They're so damn over. They're so damn good. It's like anybody you throw in there, you're going to have a tough time getting over. But Swan and Mac, I did notice, definitely won that crowd over. It was uh, it was pretty intense. There was a, a great spot. Well, one of the things I noticed right away was there was a lot of pro- Spanish profanity from Pentagon Jr. He was, uh, he was not holding back on the puta madres and this and that. He was uh, – but, hey, like you say, it's – it's Impact After Dark, man. You can say whatever you want. You can get away with murder on this thing at this point. So uh, people were really popping for that. I think there was a very, it was a heavy uh, uh, Spanish-speaking uh, contingent in the crowd because people were popping for the uh, for the profanity. Did you catch that? I mean, I don't know what he's saying. I, I couldn't pick up that it's profanity. I, I whenever I hear puta, I know I know it's not good. I think yeah, it's yeah. Like whore or bitch or something. I think so. I think it's bitch. I don't know, but. Uh, uh, people were popping for that, but man, he was uh, he was really letting loose. There was a cool sequence between uh, Phoenix and um, Rich Swan where they were kind of doing some duck over dives and flip throughs and whatnot. And it was a great spot where they did a sequence, and then Pentag- Pentagon's on the uh, on the apron, and he just kind of like pauses for a second. He looks over, and he just kind of gives a little that handshake of like, eh, "It's all right." <laughs> so, so people were kind of like making these animated memes about the whole sequence, and then Pentagon zoomed in on him, and him just going, yeah, it's all right. I think Mackenzie Mitchell even pointed it out. It was just funny as hell. When you, if you see it, if you guys can find that meme, it's really funny. 
But um, he was uh, definitely hitting the Cero Miedos a lot in everybody's face, especially Willie Max. I love that Willie Mac countered with the WM in his face for Willie Mac. Uh, so that was kind of a cool back and forth. But, I got to uh, say, man, Willie Mac, uh, you know, he can hang with everybody, like regardless oh. of his bigger size. Uh, the stuff he was doing in this match, he's busting out her uh just moving with the cruiserweights. He's a bigger guy. Uh, he's, 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 he's a chubby dude. You know, he's bigger. You know, Willie yeah. Mac, nothing, there's nothing tiny about Willie Mac, put it that way. And, uh, the fact that he could just go out there and just hang with the likes of the Lucha Brothers and Rich Swan just tells you how special of a talent he really is. He's super athletic, man. One of the things I, I had noted down was how athletic Willie Mack is. I think that's something, like you mentioned, he's a bigger guy. He's not, he doesn't have that body of a guy who moves like he does. That's and what he's we doing call like Thunder Chunky. That's what we thunder call Thunder Chunky. Dude, he was, he was fantastic. I'm, I'm super impressed with Willie Mack. We saw him live in New York at Bound for Glory. He blew me away there. I think it was the first time I ever saw him in person, and he won me over big time. I'm a big Willie Mack fan. Uh, I already love Rich Swan. Rich is kind enough to do the intro for our show. Uh, but, yeah, man, a lot of back and forth in this one. Uh, Penta hit a super sweet quad breaker on Rich Swan at one point. And then they did this, uh, the Lucha Brothers had a sequence pin, this wheelbarrow flip-through pin. Did you catch this? Just yeah, so no, no, they, they did it, uh, they did it uh, two weeks ago, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think it has a name, but uh, I, I, it's like they have that whole sequence where they do the, the spike pile driver on the apron, and then this time they followed up with the double stomp and the, uh, the flying headbutt, Phoenix and those headbutts, and then, then they finally hit the sunset uh, bomb, whatever you want to call it, but... Uh, I, I these, we need like names for this stuff. Uh, yeah, they I know have names does for like it. what is it? The zero fear or what is it? The zero fear pile driver. Yes. What's it called the pile driver. Yeah, the zero fear San Romero pile driver. But yeah, the zero fear pile driver. But man, this this move, they had a cool camera angle on it this time. They actually shot it from as if you were facing the Lucha Brothers, and so you really got to see that that swing through sunset. I called it a wheelbarrow swing through you know it kind of looked like this wheelbarrow thing but uh wheelbarrow pin on willie mack to get the uh to get the win lucha brothers go over on this one but uh after that kyle lax walks out and uh the crowd's going nuts they're chanting that that you know this is awesome uh, that was awesome the crowd loved it lax comes out they're putting the match over really complimenting uh the lucha brothers and uh and basically what it comes down to is the LAX offers, they say, we want to give it a title shot to Familia. And at homecoming, it's going to be LAX putting their titles on the line against the Lucha Brothers. The Lucha Brothers accept the challenge. And we have a match for homecoming, Kyle. The Lucha Brothers taking on LAX for the title. What do you think? Thoughts? Oh, man, Comments? Man. Right there. Lucha Brothers versus LAX. Uh, we're going to get a hell of a match, that's for sure. Uh, some of the best tag team wrestling in all the world of professional wrestling, that's for sure. But, Trent, y you went that whole time without either of us mentioning uh, the obvious. Uh, in that entire match, uh, Josh and Don were talking about it a lot. You know, there's a lot of emphasis on it. What's up with Conan? What's up, Conan's sleeve? What's the deal? They're talking about it all over commentary. Uh, something's going on here, man. Oh, I'm 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 coming to that. I'm coming to that. But I, but I was before I did. I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask the uh, the Impact Tribe. Is is there any conflict in this match? Is it too friendly? Do you guys need a conflict? Do we want as viewers? Do we want a conflict? Do we want a reason for them to be fighting? Or is it good enough for LAX to say we're gonna give the match to Familia because who else deserves it more? But you know our 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 brothers and and the Lucha Brothers here. So. I don't know. What do you think? Do you need a reason? And, and especially in today's day and age, do you need a reason for this match? Would that make it better or would that make would it not matter at all? Well, I don't know because it's like it's all good sportsmanship. It's all handshakes. You know, it's all respect. That's great. Yeah. All, all that good, happy shit. That's great. But uh, the issue here is clearly going to be Conan. It's just yes. a matter of what. And it's also does Conan all right, because Te technically, if you want to talk baby face and heel and put wrestlers in that sort of box, LAX 
would be considered babyface. The crowd loves them. The Lucha Brothers, the crowd couldn't be any more up their ass. You got two teams that the crowd loves. So does Conan walk away from this entire situation? Or does one of these teams turn heel and Conan goes off with the other team? Well, here, here's what uh, Conan. So we, we do jump to Conan in the back after this. There was a little bit of a Ultimate X uh, retrospective and a, a retrospective on on Brian Cage after this whole thing happened here. Just a uh, him winning the title, never having a title shot. Uh, he did some great mic work. I got to put that out the cage. He's ready. He is really building up his main event shot. So it's a quick little thing in between LAX and, and Lucha Brothers getting out of the ring. A uh, little little background on Brian Cage. But then we went to the back, and Conan is back there, and he is pissed off at LAX. He is letting loose on LAX. What the hell are you doing? You know, I, did I tell you to do this? I thought, you know, and then they're like, what's the problem? What's wrong? They're our familia. They're our, our brothers. What, <clears throat> well, excuse me, what's the problem? And he says, the problem is I saw this happen with Hoovy and Psychosis and Eddie and Ray, and it always causes rifts, causes problems. He goes, why don't you listen to me? And they're like, well, we didn't think that would be an issue with us and blah, blah, blah. So basically he's letting them know that, I've seen this happen. It's caused problems between between our people before, and I see it happening here. But I don't know. It, they really didn't give us too much with this. It basically, is it, they gave us a little bit of background. They dropped a bunch of names, but uh, based on that, Kyle, do you see do you see where this could be going? Do you think do you see where Conan's coming from on this? No. And when Conan walked away, he said that he knows what he has to do. Yes. What does he have to do? I don't know. That's the thing. My prediction, as uh, we were talking earlier, uh, you know, my prediction. I think that Conan is the troublemaker. I think Conan is everything King was saying he was, and uh, I got a feeling Conan's going to cause the most problems out of this whole thing. And he's going to he's going to be the crux in this whole story, man. So don't know where it's going. He's not not too happy with this. Yeah, it's weird, man, because it's like. Uh... I love Conan with LAX, but like part of me knows. I think of this trend. Historically, yes. every tag team eventually outgrows their manager when they get over, right? right. Would you say that's accurate? I would say at a point, yeah. yeah at, at a, a point, point, you start to outgrow your manager, especially when the crowd loves you. Like the heels, they can run with the manager forever. It makes more sense because the manager is devious and helps them, you know, score wins and stuff like that. But LAX, as good guys, do they really need Conan anymore if they start to outgrow Pops? You know what I mean? And uh, this all kind of goes back to you said what King said. King could be right about Conan the entire time. That all would kind of make sense in the storytelling. But uh, it's just, ooh, they got me on the edge of my seat, man. I really don't know what the hell is going on or what the hell is going to go on. I don't know. We, I guess we'll wait and see. We got, you know, about a month, roughly about a month until homecoming. Uh, so we'll see where it goes. And we got a lot of time. There's a holiday episode in there. So I don't know how much will be said on the holiday episode, but plenty of time to build the story. We'll see what happens. But uh, all right. We go from that to the women's, uh, the knockouts, I'm sorry, knockouts rematch between Katarina and Jordan Grace. And, uh, I noticed one thing right off the bat, Kyle. The Vegas crowd way more into these two than the New York crowd was. Did you catch that? Pretty accurate. Pretty accurate observation there, Trent. But uh, also, this crowd was mic'd differently than the New York crowd, Trent. Uh, I feel like in this episode, throughout the entire episode, not just this as an example, but throughout the entire episode, uh, I could hear the crowd maybe a little too clearly. Now, it worked. It, it made the show sound and feel uh, much better. Uh, the, the chants were coming across very loudly. But I caught parts of people's conversations throughout the show. Like, yeah, I heard things fans were saying close to the microphone. Did you catch any of those? I totally. I caught it more in the main event. When, yeah, the main uh, event especially. When they were like, they were like, come on, come on, Eli, grab, grab this. What are, you, what are you doing? Grab this. I'm like, why am I hearing like one guy? Like he grabbed the weakest weapon in the bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. He's like, <laughs> he grabbed the weakest weapon in the bunch. I'm like, why am I hearing that one guy? 
Why so, do I hear that guy? I guess they were experimenting with the audio, trying to, you know, find the sweet good, spot, though. get it perfectly. Uh, but th- they did a good job. The they crowd was job. very loud. No, it, it sounded good. It sounded fuller, which I liked. It was it was a fuller sound to it. But, uh, yeah, the crowd's super into these two. Uh, Don made a great uh, observation when he mentioned, uh, or when Josh mentioned he, he tried getting a word with the girls beforehand. Don said, most women don't have much to say to you, I find. <laughs> Which, uh, <laughs> poor Josh. Hey, but he's married to a knockout, so hey, we'll give him that, right? Hey. <laughs> hey, I, I guess in the end, Josh Matthews wins. He actually married a knockout, so no matter what Don says, he can always point to that. Five-time knockouts champion, Madison Rain, uh, mind you. But uh, I noticed they were really selling, they're really big on putting over Jordan Grace's workouts and her fitness regimen. They're really putting that emphasis on like how much she works out, how much she's in the gym. Uh, and then throughout, they were kind of dropping hints about Brandon Toll, referee Brandon Toll, and his issues with the knockouts because he was a knock, he was the referee during the match. So uh, there's a lot of mention of that. These are the little things they kept dropping in. But uh, I noticed Kyle that Katarina looked a lot more, a lot better for this outing than the first one. She kind of had that like scouted mentality going into it. Like she, all right, like I learned from my other match, I learned from my last one. Uh, you know, against Jordan, I know what I, what I got to do. I, I noticed she was doing a lot more counters and breaks. I don't know. Did you catch that? Well, am I, maybe I'm, I'm, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but did you catch that? She seemed like she was a scouted opponent this time more than their first match. A great observation there, Trent. Uh, I know <laughs> one of the things that, uh, Don Callis mentioned was that Jordan did not take too kindly to him comparing her to Rhino. But I think, he, but he justified. It's like I wasn't meaning like she's like you know Rhino, like Rhino, but like she has that kind of power and strength like Rhino. So I'm wondering when I heard that, I'm like, I wonder if it was a shoot that she really came up to him afterwards and was like, I didn't like that Rhino comment because the way he sounded it was like, oh man, I wonder <laughs> maybe she really was not happy about it. But uh, I you know, noticed that uh, Don Callis like adds these little. Uh... Little uh, just notes in his commentary, and it's it's stuff that you know would, he'd really have personal dealings with these uh, wrestlers backstage. And uh, I can't help but think, like, did she really approach him backstage after like she saw the episode? Like, hey, I really didn't like you calling me Rhino on TV, I or was this so. something that he humorously just sprinkled in himself? I, I you know, I'm thinking it. I'm thinking it's the, uh, it's it's her actually coming up to him, man. I really think she I really does kind of look like Rhino. She reminds me of Rhino too. Similar, you know, she's stocky, similar type of singlet. Uh, yeah, I mean, Rhino is very dominant and destructive. It is a compliment. I, I then that's how it was meant. But uh, uh, the she had a great pounce uh, during this match that she hit on Katarina. It was very Monty Brown like. Any for uh, old school TNA fans. This was a very Monty Brown like pounce. I think this pounce. is a like pounce Brown? of the night. I could be wrong, but I think Willie Mack hit a pounce too. Did he? I think he might have. You're right. But uh, were you a Monty Brown fan, Kyle, during the early days? <laughs> um, you know what, man? <sighs> He's kind of like I mean, I, I was a fan of Monty Brown. I I, I don't want to shit on the guy because I like him, but uh the thing is with Monty Brown is I have to be honest. My, like, memories of Monty Brown are just, like, me and my friends, like, just making fun of his promos. And not, like, saying that he sucked or anything. It's just, like, the funny shit he would say. We would just be, you know, sending each other Monty Brown clips nonstop. <laughs> I love Monty Brown, yeah. microphone was hysterical. Oh, yeah. Monty Brown was classic. Intentionally classic. or unintentionally. Did you see, like, maybe, what, two months ago that there was a... What turned out to be a fake Twitter account that claimed it was Monty Brown, and he was like petitioning Impact for a final match. He's like, I got one more match in me, and everybody thought it was actually Monty Brown because it was just really convincing. But it turned out it wasn't Monty Brown; it was just some parody. The be- internet is a strange, strange place, Trent. Very strange place. Uh, but bear hug submission by Jordan Grace this time. Uh, she went ahead and, and got the win, same way she got the first, the win in the first match. I did notice match overall way better than the first one. And her finisher this time around did look a lot better because one of my comments on the first match were I felt like the bear hug submission didn't do her justice for what she is. It just didn't make sense for her. 
But this time around, Cal, I think she it made it look really strong. I think she looked great doing the bear hook this time. So definitely hats off to Jordan Grace. She got a, a good win, a second win over uh, Katarina. But uh, all right, we cut from that, Cal. KM and Falaba are bummed about losing. <laughs> they, they lost. They didn't get the service. They didn't. They don't get to be you know Scarlet's boys. But they're gonna hit the town. They're going to hit the town. He's like, we're going to cheer up. We're going to hit Vegas. We're in Vegas. We're going to hit the town. We're going to have a great time. And then they have a little screenshot. It's seven minutes later, and they're crying and weeping. And they're they're bummed out. We lost. I can't believe it. I don't know what's happening. But the highlight of that, the whole in between the crying, you just hear Bago go, follow, just go, <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> like this set to Scarlet's music. <laughs> did you catch that because that was like my highlight of the show yeah, <laughs> hysterical dude uh, and the little things man it's the little thing with those two is like, uh, i don't have any kids uh, i don't have a wife dude it was so yeah it was just so good man scarlet appears the music hits the smoke hits scarlet comes out she says uh sorry boys you're at the bottom of the list now and then they start crying more but uh we had ultimate x flashback uh brought to you by the gwn after that kyle it was Trevor Lee with Shane Holmes taking on low key Andrew Everett in, in a Ultimate X match. This was with the uh, the big green, not the big green, but the green belt, short lived green X division title from the GFW merger days. It wasn't a bad belt. I actually liked that belt. It had the kind of the X X plate coming across it. It looked cool. You know, I thought it was a cool looking belt. I, I don't know what happened to it. Though. I wonder who has it. Yeah, no, I like that one too. Uh, actually, that predates uh, the merger. Um, that was uh, 2016, I think, in the like right, right in the Corgan era. Actually, uh, Shane Helms took the blue X division title and repainted it green. Oh yeah, that's right. That's yep, right. Yep. It, it goes wanna, back to when Helms was around. I want to. Oh, good call. I want to ask the the Impact uh, Tribe here. What was your favorite X Division title design? Ooh, because there's been a couple, right? I mean, there's yeah. that was the there was the original NWA TNA one. There was uh man, there was this the green one. There was the blue one with the X. Then there's the current one. I'm probably missing one in there. What has been your favorite X Division uh, title design? And you know what, guys, go ahead and add us on Facebook and Twitter. Type in We Talk Impact in the search bar. It'll come up. And like us and leave a photo on a recent post. I'll, maybe I'll put this question up as a, as a thing. Go ahead and leave a comment on with the with the photo of which one you like the best. Because and I'm going to one up that question. Uh, who was your favorite person to hold it? Uh, there you go. Add that on there too. Get a double points. You put a picture of that person holding that belt. Personally, Trent, I like the classic, just red X design. Still yeah. says NWA TNA on it. Yeah, that, the that's original a great X Division Championship. I like the current one a lot too because it kind of reminds me of that one. Yeah, uh, I got to hold the current one. Uh, Brian Cage was in town for something at Warrior Wrestling here, and uh, just chilling on his merch table. He stepped away for a little bit, and of course, I had a little fun. I was X Division Champion for about thirty-eight seconds. It's fantastic. <laughs> Then he walked back in, and I hey, and I ran I ran hey, away. Put that down. And he's like, "Put that down before I, you know, make you eat a bicep." And I'm like, "Whoa, all right, big man, I'm out of here." <laughs> but uh, all right, so after that, Kyle, referee Brandon Toll bursts into Tessa's locker room, right? And he's angry about her bullying refs. He goes, you know. He's like, he's like, uh, he drops know. the line straight out of Full Metal Jacket. He said, uh. What is, what is your major malfunction? It's right. <laughs> Remember Full Metal Jacket? I do, dude. Bless yeah. Me. I'm living in a world of shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Great, crazy movie. Crazy fucking movie. Basically, that movie for me could end at the first half and I'd be good. After, Everybody uh, says that. Everybody says that. Like the I movie. didn't need the war part. I didn't need the rest of it. Boot yep. camp was enough. That was it. That was it. Yep. Uh, but he basically gives her the, you know, the lowdown on how she's treating refs. And uh, she doesn't give she she kind of basically bullshits giving a shit to uh, what he just said. She goes, "Oh, I got it, loud, loud and clear, loud and clear." Like you can tell she doesn't care. Shook her head, said, "I don't care." Um, 
We go from Matt to Tommy Dreamer, who cuts a scathing promo on Eli Drake. Uh, Tommy, while wearing a sweet Superstar Billy Graham t-shirt, by the way, which I would love to find, get my hands on that. I need to find that. But he calls uh, Eli Drake a skinny jean-wearing millennial. And uh, he calls him the Rock Light. And he says he makes a reference to him being on Tough Enough and getting cut. And getting cut. Calls Eli complacent. It was an intense, great promo. Kyle, I know you're a big Tommy Dreamer, Dreamer fan. What do you think of this promo? This was a really intense one, man. Well, you know, I'm in between here because I'm such a big Tommy Dreamer fan and I'm such a big Eli Drake fan. But uh, no, scathing promo from Tommy Dreamer here. Uh, the, the, he mentions um, Eli Drake losing when the company needed him most and then, you know, settling and not working his way back up the card. And uh, I guess that goes to tell you folks who've always wondered, you know, why did they leave him down? Why didn't they push Eli Drake again after? Well, I guess in the, the company's eyes, uh, that that's your sequence of events right there. That's the, the written narrative. Uh, he settled for complacency, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, great promo by Tommy. He was, he was really putting that match over for later in the show, but, uh, we go from that and it's Ray Lynn, one of the, uh, the newcomers. I don't think she's on contract. Kyle, have you heard anything about Ray Lynn being on contract or is she just in Vegas? Nope. Don't know her. Know nothing about her. She was fun. I I think, I think I looked her up a little, little nuts. I think I looked her up and, uh, She's she's been doing it a while. She's got some roots. I think her husband is a wrestler too, so I think that's that's her uh, her connection. But uh, Taya is going with this new urban style, this Wera loca style. And uh, did you did you catch? I mean, did, what do you think? It, they kind of just changed it a couple of weeks ago, like out of nowhere. Like she's basically just like street Taya now. Like she went from the game of thrones tie out to this and this is like she's fully embracing this this like uh latin flavor i i okay i'm gonna put this out to the to the uh the impact tribe the lounge i know taya is canadian and she's trained in mexico she lived down there speaks fluent spanish uh does she have hispanic roots i can't i don't know i i'm just curious because she speaks very good spanish she's very influenced by a spanish culture Mexican to be exact. I know she did spend a lot of time down there, but is she, does she, is she part Hispanic? You know, what's her deal? Does anybody know? Let me know. I'm, I've just been curious. You know anything about that, Kyle? No, I do not. Not a clue. I, I figured she lived in Mexico and trained there, you know, to. Yeah, she did. I know that. Craft. Yeah. She, uh, she's really embraced the style, the Latin street culture, which is, uh, it's, it's a good look for her. I think, she, I think she's pulling it off well. Yeah. Uh, she's got a little bit of a street attitude, you know, she reminds me of like a, you know what I would call this? Uh, she's got a bit of a Cardi B gimmick. She reminds me of like a Cardi B type character, you know? Okay. All right. Just... She, uh, I know there's a, um, there's a, there's a wrestling related social media account in it called color wrestling, which you guys might be familiar with. They did the full house, uh, full house opening montage set to impact wrestling superstars. You, you remember seeing that, right, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, uh, Stark. The guy's name is Stark Nazareth. He's pretty cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, I think, color wrestling. So they, he did one for uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air set to uh, with Taya on there. So I thought that was, it was funny, man. Taya and uh, I believe it was Tessa. But it was uh, it was funny. But a um, little, little quick match. You know, Taya does a – she wins by submission. And, dude, it was a crazy submission move. It was like a camel clutch – Slash leg lock type of thing uh, against Raylan. Raylan tapped out quick, but dude, what a what a cool submission move! Did you catch that thing? That was a really interesting submission. Yeah, no, I, I don't know what to call it. It's like a Indian death lock, STF. Oh, I, awesome, awesome submission though. Uh, I'm uh, I, I think that's uh, I think it's a good move for. Her. I think she should. Uh, Use that moving forward, and uh, you know, man, I, I think uh, the the Latin, you know, street, you know, probably fits her a little better. That's probably more true so. to who she is in real life. I think so. I think I think this is much more natural for her than the uh, more the medieval gimmick she was doing. This is this is more her style. 
But, uh, you know, I'll make a comment here. We need to start having names for some of these moves, like these finishers, like Taya's, Lucha Brothers. You know, like, I think it's got to be established so Josh and Don can sufficiently get them over with us, the viewing audience. Because, like, they struggle with that, man. Impact they do. Wrestling they always have. With, uh, having set names for moves like uh i'm shooting blanks right now but i could say all right here is a great example um on uh social media uh sammy callahan kept saying that uh his pile driver the cactus one is the uh the cactus special 97 that's what he kept saying and then uh like on commentary josh would be like ah oh, the, the the cactus driver like, they got to have a set name for these finishing moves. You yes. got to brand and label these things. Because branding and labeling on finishers is, like, huge in wrestling. Uh, That's what you sell to kids, man. Kids, big kids time. stick to that sort of thing. One thing I'll definitely give uh, Vince McMahon is that he he branded specific moves into being bigger than life. You know, at, at, like, damn Stone Cold Stunner and People's Elbow and jackknife power bomb like it wasn't just a power bomb it was a jackknife power bomb it wasn't just a super kick it was street sweet chin music you know things like that uh people people remember that shit you know that's the stuff that really sticks in your head and i think impacts net you're right though they've never been good at branding I and mean, they obviously there's it's not everybody's unbranded on the finisher but i think going in before you're even gonna have a match and hitting these things it's got to be established what that finisher is called so people can just keep getting that over. Like, Josh and Don need to keep drilling that into our heads. Like, she's yeah, going they, for the they, whatever. They do. You know, I'm going to call a spade a spade here, Trent. They do a really shitty job at that. Like, uh, LAX has a few different finishers aside from the Street Sweeper. I've never heard a name for any of them. Uh, they got to they gotta name the moves more on the show. I agree. I, and a I lot of these these wrestlers definitely have names for the moves. It's just a matter of them putting it on TV. Yeah, I think it's a disservice to to both sides, the company and the wrestler, by not tattooing what these names are in our head. So uh, definitely something I'd like to recommend to uh, to the team over there. But, um, man, after that match, Tessa Blanchard runs out and attacks Taya from behind. Uh, the referee, Toll, gets in her face. And gets punched right in the fucking mouth for it. You catch that was a great punch. <laughs> she, she just jocked him right in the jaw, which is awesome. And then, Kyle, the best part, she starts choking the living life out of Brandon Toll, the referee, to the point where I think Don could say he's turning purple. And dude, he was legit turning purple. Um, Gail Kim runs out to the rescue and, and, uh, she kind of breaks it up, but then Taya spears Tessa. Tessa's expressions, though, Kyle, are fantastic. Like her express, her facial expressions are incredible. I, I mean, I, it's my favorite part about Tessa Blanchard. Her reactions to shit is un, unreal, unreal. What'd yeah, you no, think? this was like a really well done segment. I noticed that uh, perfect. There, everything was like timed perfectly, and uh, perfect. the, the facial expressions on. Uh, Tessa, like she's very good at that, uh, and not just like when she's in the ramp, like looking up at them. Uh, earlier in the episode, when Brandon Tolley first came into her locker room, like she, the look she was giving him, which is like, "Yes, sir." Like, ah, she's very good at that. The facial expressions, and I think like that's one of those little, uh, you know, just minor things in wrestling that just—it's a simple thing, but it goes a long way. Yeah, she's she's great at that. I I always really admire that about about Tessa. Um. The crowd went bananas for Gail Kim, though. I mean, you know, it's kind of cool to see Gail come out again, man. Uh, you, you know, you you, you kind of forget, you know, if you don't forget about her, but you forget that she's back there, you know, agenting these women's matches. And, you know, she makes an appearance. She's, I mean, she is the, she's the standard bearer, the flag bearer for the knockouts division. So when she comes out, it's like, this is, this is a impact Hall of Famer. This is impact royalty coming out here. So it was pretty cool to see Gail again. Uh, all right, we go from that. Well, uh, no, no, huh? I'm not. Whoa, I'm not. Whoa, I'm not whoa. done. I'm not done, whoa, Mister. Whoa, whoa. All right, excuse me. I know you're a Gil Kim fan. Go ahead, tell me about. All right, Gil well, Kim. I, I want to. I want to bring it up. Uh, do we possibly see Gail versus Tessa down the line, or uh, 
maybe, uh, you know, before we even look that far, uh, maybe we get Gale as like a special guest referee in uh, Tessa versus Ty's next uh, encounter because, I mean, Tessa keeps cheating. Uh, we were talking about we need to throw a stipulation or something in there. Uh, throw Gail Kim in there. She's she's the special guest referee that's going to, you know, keep Tessa on her shit and stop her from cheating, no? I think, yeah, I think I'm going to agree with you on the latter. I think she's not going to wrestle again, but I think she's definitely a referee spot could be perfect. Well, well the match. referee spot could lead to more storytelling with a match after that. You know what I mean? You could stretch this out. You could map this whole thing out. I don't know. I mean, how how retired is Gail, though? You know, Dude, Gail's she... in great shape. You've seen her run out. She looks great. She does, but she was pretty adamant on being retired. So I'm thinking, like, you know, that this is wrestling, she, Trent. Don't, don't, don't you sit there and act like you've heard this a thousand times. Nobody hey, retires. Nobody Gail Kim retires. Gail Kim's a classy lady, man. Gail Kim's different, though. She's a classy lady, and she sticks. She she might stick to her word. She might not want to get her, you know, get get dirty again. She wants to just chill. But like you said, Kyle, it is wrestling. Anything can happen in wrestling. There's no such thing as retirement. So. Definitely see. Again, we have about a month till homecoming. I'm sure she's involved somehow. And then um, and then after that, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, real quick after that, Johnny's back there. Johnny um, is, uh, is setting up some stuff. You know, he's, he's having a, he's basically talking about his match with Cage. And Cross, Killer Cross interrupts him and basically says, hey, you know, he's, you know, he's thought about my offer. You know, I want, I want to, you know, you don't, don't turn your back on this. This is an opportunity for you. But Johnny is not having it. Kyle, he is, he wants none of it. What do you think this, I'm super confused by the cross and Johnny thing, man. I don't even know what to say. I don't know. I cannot even offer a comment on it because I'm too lost. But I think Johnny's lost too. Johnny's like, what the hell? Why do you, what do you want from me? Like, get away from me. I don't want anything to do with you. Where do you think this is going? Do you have any predictions on this? And loungers, Impact Tribe, what do you guys think about this one? I want to know what people think about this story because I'm way off on this one. I don't even know what to make of it. What do you think, Cal? Now I'm with you, man. Uh, see, if it if it wasn't Killer Cross and it was somebody else, I'd probably have a better chance at making a guess. But because Killer Cross's character is just so out of the ordinary. I have nothing. I, I have no no observation, no, nothing, no insight, nothing. Uh, it's just, it's weird. It, it's strange. Like, why why is Killer Cross so uh, just fixated on helping out Johnny Impact? I don't know, man. Uh, don't this know. is this is one of those question marks. I have no clue. And Killer Cross. Oh man, it's see, dude, you got marbles in my mouth. I have no idea. No. Marbles, hey, marbles. I like when Vince Russo calls uh one of those dirt cheek guys. You're <laughs> on Castor in the Marks. He calls him oh, marbles. God. Hey, marbles. But uh, yeah, that, that is a very destructive podcast. It's awesome. Very, oh my God, Castor in the Marks. Jesus Christ, that is uh that is nuts. But uh, all right, we go from there to what I was looking forward to all week, Kyle. The debut of the Rascals. The Rascals. This was Desmond Xavier, Zachary Wentz, and Trey Miguel. After that amazing, um, after that amazing backstage vignette that that '70s show vignette that you were basically on the other side of the camera for. I I know you were in that room, Kyle. Do not yeah. do not uh, deny you were in that room too. Amen. I know you were in that yeah, exactly. I know you were there. <laughs> No words. No words. No words. No words. But uh, I was looking forward to it all week. Personal note, I love all three of these dudes. I am I know these guys personally. Oh, good for you. Yeah, good for me because they're great dudes to know, man. <laughs> I was really happy about, about this one, man. This was a personal win for me to see these boys. I, I know Desmond's been on before, but and I know Zach's made an appearance. They've all made an appearance, but this was like, they're officially contracted talent now. This match was it was fun. This is a fun match. I did I did notice that Trey was not wrestling though. I I was kind of surprised that I, I don't know if Trey's the manager, but he did not wrestle. I thought if they were gonna the way they made it sound was that they that debut 
it was going to be like a three way, like three on three or something, but it was uh, just Trey on the outside, kind of like, you know, cheering him on and stuff. Yeah, Not and sure. It was a little weird how uh, Desmond and Wentz were wearing t shirts that said Desmond and Wentz on them, but the, the, Trey Miguel wasn't part of that show. Did you notice that Trey Miguel wasn't part of that uh, t shirt? So the thing is, the reason being is that Desmond and Zach have been teaming as the Rascals for like a year or two now regularly already so it's uh, like the two of them are already the rascals but um trey being a part of it now is the new part so that's like the new twist on it so okay yes yeah, so i don't know if, like i said i don't know if he's the manager i don't know what they're doing with him, but trey when you see him finally wrestle that's gonna be fun that dude's cool that dude is cool he is also uh he's also the better half of miss uh, alicia toot She's been very public about that that budding relationship. I don't know if you've seen that. Two of them are uh, lovebirds. Ah, eh, you know, she's she just hasn't met me yet, Trent. That's all that. Means. Yeah, that's the thing. You weren't at the you weren't at the tapings. If had you gone to the Canada tapings, the Toronto tapings, Kyle, that could have been you. Could have been you. Could have been me. Could have been me. Could have been you. Would have got on one knee right there in the Tim Hortons. <laughs> <laughs> Right next to an original with two cream, two sugar. Maybe make it three sugar because you're extra sweet. Right there, a proposal. But, uh, dude, what a match. There was a move. It was basically what I think Don called a power bronco, bronco buster by by uh, by Wentz. He bronco busted the shit out of Chris Bay. And um, the finisher, which, Kyle, I am convinced that fin- the finishing – video clip is the most viewed clip on the internet this week man or something because i saw it everywhere i turned now do you want to describe that finish kyle do you want to describe what that that finisher was what what that looked like for everybody i mean zachary wentz hits the uh standing moonsault and in midair desmond tosses him a good uh couple feet onto the opponent i words don't do it justice no, yeah, I know it's the podcast, it's the theater of the mind, but you saw the move. This is a review. You saw the move. Another move we need a name for, but actually, Trent, I think they do have a name for it. But where the schleps? Where we don't have it. It's he said like super. No, no I got it. I got it. It's the hot fire flame. Oh, the, right. the hot fire flame. All right, so we do have a branded finishing move there. That viral piece of media right there. That is the. Let's say hot fire flame. Hot fire flame, sir. Hot fire flame. Uh, great move, hot fire. But yeah, so like, I like could you use said, some hot fire Cheetos right now. Oh, dude, I, I would kill some hot fire. Hey, <laughs> wait, oh, wait. Side note, did it, and loungers Impact Tribe? Tell me if they did this when you were growing up, or if you're still growing up. If that's if they serve it now where you live, I'll never grow up. When they all right, check this out. When I was in high school, one of the snacks you could buy at the snack bar. Was they would take a bag of hot fire, flaming hot Cheetos, and pour melted cheese into the bag, and then give you a fork, and it would be like hot melted cheese over flaming hot Cheetos, and it was a chips and cheese for like a buck. And I thought Where Chicago you go to in school in the city, Chicago in the city, oh, of Chicago. Man. I heard, I thought this was I think this is something Chicago made up because I remember hearing. Somebody from Houston years later saying, yeah, hot Cheetos and, and cheese. You know, and I'm like, yeah, wait, we had that up here. I thought it came from here. I cannot pinpoint where that was invented. Because I, I've heard it in a couple other places. But that is like what, you know, that is definitely a ghetto fabulous snack. And it was fantastic. That is the taste. If you ever have a chance, guys, take the little bag of flaming Hot Cheetos, pour some, uh, you know, Velveeta or something into it. Eat it with a fork. Kyle, try it out tomorrow. Have, make you it know, breakfast. For a guy that's never smoked pot before, I think you just explained the stoniest meal I've ever heard in my life. Dude, they sold it for a dollar in the little snack thing at lunch in my high school, and I was all over it, man. Yeah, for a guy who's sober as hell, I uh, was all over that, man. So uh, try it out. Guys, guys, I'm not crazy. Try it out. Try it out for sure. But, uh, all right, great, great debut by the Rascals. People were super, super into it. They really won the crowd over. They just got to keep it going. I think I think the next step, Kyle, should be 
Trey's got to show what he can do. He's got to show this crowd what he can do. He's good. That 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 dude is he can go. So uh, let's see what happens with that. Excellent use of personalities from all three of them. All right, we go from there. Kira's there talking in the back about Allie. She's worried about Allie. She she's just she looks confused. Cow, she looked like she needed a hug from you, like you forgot about her. Hey, hey, <laughs> I'd love to give Kira Hogan a hug. I think I. Hit that clear at the top of the show, but uh, right. and, and Mackenzie Mitchell, I'd love to give Mackenzie Mitchell a hug too. All right, the yeah, Impact is filled with the beautiful women. Yeah, call it like it is, gorgeous, beautiful all women up in Impact Wrestling. But no, Kira Hogan looked very scared, very traumatized, but she hasn't lost hope. Kira is very hopeful. She says in the promo, "Come home, Allie." And she's she's in denial. She's in denial about Dark Alley. She she says to Mackenzie, "Oh, you know, she could have hurt me, but she didn't." Where do you think it's going? What do you, what, what's next? I mean, does, does, does Kira get left out here? Does, what happens? I mean, I feel like Allie is just transitioning and transitioning. I think, I mean, I think we're going to see Allie put her hands on Kira Hogan. I think it's going to happen. I think so. I think that's where we're going here is we got an epic showdown just brewing between these two. But uh, we go from that, Kyle, to one of the highlights. One of the highlights of the show. My favorite part of the show. I, mean, I figured when I was seeing, watching this, I'm like, this is going to be, this is probably Kyle's favorite part. Kyle's laughing his ass off right now. Go ahead. Kyle, you don't, why don't you break this one down? Because this is your favorite part. Take it. Let the people All know right. about this one. So we, uh, we go to uh, sh- the Shady Acres Mental Hospital in Baltimore. Where, uh, yeah, Alicia's there. Uh, you know, she's sorry. She's sorry, you know, her only other choice was for him to, to get I, I This is so just ridiculous. I can't even talk about it without laughing. But, uh, <laughs> no, you know, we see we see Eddie and Alicia, you know, there in the mental hospital. But th- that wasn't the highlight. I, I was happy to see Alicia leave and Moose come in because Moose, oh, my God, man. Moose killed this. Moose was so funny. Everything Moose said just had me dying word after word. But, uh. Moose goes to visit his old pal, Eddie. Uh, even a, a little story time, Moose pulls out a copy of uh, Anything is Possible, the Eddie Edwards story, which uh, we will link in the description uh, so you could buy yourself a copy. Impact Wrestling did not promote the book too much. but Eddie No, Edwards, they didn't. Not at all, actually. I think, I think this is the first time it's been mentioned on Impact Television, but uh, Eddie recently came out with a children's book, and we're going to link it for you here so you could uh, pick it up. But, no, Moose uh, picked up Eddie's uh, book, read it a little bit, and uh, was asking him, hey, what about when I powerbombed you on the ramp? Uh, what about when you turned your back on me? You know, all that stuff. <laughs> but uh, just the way, the way Moose was saying it to him the was delivery. so funny. Yeah, the <laughs> delivery. That's the thing with Moose. Moose, the delivery of his lines are hysterical. and sometimes. I don't know if he's intentionally being funny, but he's just hysterical. He's, he was so good. He was like, I'm, I'm better than you, Eddie. I'm just better. That, that, that low whisper, that, that creepy vibe, it was so good, man. Moose was just, yeah. Moose was gold in this episode. In those, like, two minutes, shit, man. But don't worry, you know, because Moose, Moose is a good friend, so he'll stop and check on Alicia on his way home. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that little slide in there. It's like, yeah, I'll stop on you on my way home. But uh, hey, no, that was Moose was fantastic, and yeah, I'm, I'm shocked. I mean, this they did promote the book here, but not on the website. You know, not didn't say anything about it being available. I don't know, but uh, well, it wasn't an Impact Wrestling license no. product, so it's like I kind of get that from like a business. It's like, all right, you promote the stuff that's on Shop Impact. You want to be, you want to do your talent right, but as a business, you're not going to bend over backwards for something that's not going to put any money in your pocket. But it would be nice to help Eddie out. Eddie's been there for a long time. Eddie's a very loyal man to the company. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Whatever. A, yeah, Eddie's a man, dude. So um, we're reviewing the episode, not Impact's merchandising. Hey, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm all about. Look, clearly, I'm a. Dude, I own every 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 DVD and almost like forty eight T shirts from that this company. Yeah. And clearly, those I'm, ugly TNA T shirts. Oh, I love them. I love them. I got them all. Got almost all of them. 
<laughs> Except that one, that one we agree on. I agree on that was called Motorized. I'll never forget the name of that one. It was called Motorized. That's the one you posted that photo of. Yeah. Now, anything with like the 2009, like affliction Ed Hardy type look, like I don't know what they were thinking, man. But the the high fashion, you know, mid 2000s TNA shirts, don't even give them away to charity. Children don't deserve those. Just burn them. They're hideous. <laughs> dude no you're, you're being a little too hard on these guys that, that, that stuff was in in 2009 people were wearing affliction everywhere you're just a young lad what'd you know that, that's another picture that would be funny just trent with the affliction gear you know oh my god afro trent affliction trent you oh know, trent, lord trent through the years <laughs> it's a hell of a journey man <laughs> hell of a journey if you want to take it um but yeah man we uh we uh, we get we go from from uh, Eli and uh, oh, I'm sorry from um, Moose and Eddie and in the uh, nut house the, in the nut house the was <laughs> oh the name of it too Shady Acres <laughs> what a great name I don't know why it's hilarious uh, Mackenzie catches up with Eli in the back and Eli basically says he blames Impact for all this for the violence he blames Impact for letting it happen so uh, good point. That's kind of a good point. You know, he, he he was trying to blame. He was looking for somebody to blame. Blame the company. It's you guys. It's you guys. You let it happen. Damn owl. Son of a bitch. They should name that. They should name. They should have named the owl Rebby. Shouldn't they have done that? They should have named. They named that owl Rebby. What a great shot back that would have been, if they named it Rebby. You know, but, I, I'm I'm not mad that Rebby came at them. I'm mad that they didn't go through with the contest that they just left it alone damn it that owl deserves a name they should have named it Rebby. would have been hilarious all right and then uh matt seidel and ethan page would catch up with them in the uh in the back and uh matt seidel informs ethan page that his next teaching lesson will come in the form of a match against one another and page is a little confused and matt Seidel's like, no, nah, gonna have a match against each other. So there you go. Match is on. Ethan Page and Matt Seidel. I'm not sure why though. It seems pretty quick. It's not- you know, Trent, it's less of a wrestling match and uh more of a a lesson teaching. That's what Matt Seidel was saying. Let's see how it goes. We'll see if they how they pull it off. But then Kyle, we are on main event. And um, I'm sorry, one, one thing to slide in about the Seidel and Ethan Page, it's to qualify for the X Division uh, Ultimate X. So that's uh, there's stakes on there. There's a, they're, they're involved, there's some stakes on this. But anyway, yeah, main event. The legendary Tommy Dreamer taking on Eli Drake. But before they, they kick it off, there's an interview with Eli in the back where um, he, you know, he basically blames Impact. You know, he was, he was, uh, Actually, no. I, you know, he he's he basically just letting it be known that he doesn't like any of this stuff, but this is all an impact for letting it happen. Anyway. And then and then he said something weird about uh, sending, like he said that uh, you know, just like how I sent the bitch to the graveyard, uh, Tommy's going to the retirement home, and then after that, Eli's got a coffin waiting for him. It was a little dark. It's it a little dark. A little dark for Eli. Usually, Eli's not that dark. But um, I, I like uh, Tommy Dreamer busting out the dummy yes. Yeah, dude, it was, it was this was a great match. This was a really good match. There's a lot of cool um a lot of cool spots, man. A lot of cool weaponry. Uh things really took off pretty quick on the hardcore aspect of things. A lot of back and forth. Eli was getting booed out of the building, which the crowd again, the crowd really into it. They love Tommy. But I like that this crowd liked to uh you know, like the to, to cheer and boo. Like they were they were a vocal crowd. I'm glad. But um it was it was cool. Like they were basically selling a lot of the era and style difference. Like that was a big focus on the match was the era and style difference. And uh so they're really like emphasizing how basically it's another it's another time. Styles are different. How much is this gonna work out? But uh Eli ends up purposely getting counted out because he says, nah, screw it, I'm done. I'm done, dummies. And he walks out. Tommy's not happy. But then a microphone goes to Josh, and Josh announces that the match will be restarted via management's decision. No DQ. Uh, this was 
it was pretty cool. It was, it was pretty cool to get that back on. Hardcore matches on. Everybody's super into it. I <laughs> tell me, Kyle, if this is one of the quotes you got written down. <laughs> Don says, Tommy with a makeshift colonoscopy and Eli Drake now. <laughs> That's hardcore. <laughs> the like, makeshift colonoscopy. I got that, but that wasn't it. Uh, another good Don line in this match was uh, Josh plugged uh, Top Gun being on Pop TV that night after the show, and Don fires back at him that his favorite scene in Top Gun is uh, the volleyball scene where they all have their shirts off. I thought that was funny. Don Callis, man. Don Callis. Not not afraid to point out a handsome man. He, he called him and Josh Thelma and Louise somewhere yeah. earlier in the episode. He's had yeah, a lot of did. funny stuff. He like, was talking about Don Callis. Josh was mentioning how as soon as the show's done, he's heading off to uh, Gold Rush, the Twitch special that aired on Friday, December 1st. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, November 30th. That was the gold rush. We're gonna we're we'll trying to interview, we'll, we'll try to watch that one, Kyle. Let's try to get that yeah, one. We should bust review. out a quick review for our YouTube channel. Not Absolutely. even allowed. Do that exclusive. Let's do that, man. We'll, we'll we'll, guys, Impact Tribe, tell us. I, I want to poll the other people on this. Would you guys like a bonus show from Kyle and Trent, your two best friends here, on our Impact channel? This is on the Impact Lounge, as far as the uh, the YouTube version of the podcast goes. Uh, so anything we do, we'll also go on, into our Apple and RSS feeds. But YouTube-wise, would you like to see us do reviews of the Twitch and One Night Only specials for our Impact channel? Let us know in the comments if that's what you'd like. I would love to. I'd love to do that with you, Kyle. I think that'd be a lot of fun. But I like to do you, a lot of things with you, Trent. But uh, uh, let's, Hey, this is Impact After Dark. <laughs> you can say everything you want. You can say anything you want to me. Kyle Callis. But, <laughs> Kyle Callis over here, but uh, guys, let us know. I we I want more. I want to do more content. I, I have fun with it. You want to see that? Let us know. Uh, but anyway, I'm back and forth. Match starts off. It's a hardcore match basically at this point. And uh, you know, one of the things one of the things I did note, yeah, was what we said earlier about that one damn fan, Kyle. That one damn fan who says, "How could you pick the weakest weapon out of the box?" And another <laughs> another fan says. Uh, he goes, no, that would be the donut box. And I go, what the hell? Why am I hearing these two? Why did I hear those two guys? That one, that those two lines. I don't get it. But uh, Eli hits the gravy train. Tommy kicks out, shocks the shit out of Eli because no one's kicked out of the gravy train. And uh, the finish, Kyle, was brutal. Do you want to describe the finish? Do you recall it offhand? Because it was brutal. Yeah, yeah. You know, Drake sets Streamer off with uh, a nice piece of jewelry, the chair necklace. Hooks him up with the chair necklace and then bashes the chair with the boat oar. And then, you know, Eli took the boat oar with him after the match. Eli kept that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He took it with him and like. Oh, yes, he did. He He, he was very proud of it. He did. Uh, That was a that was a crazy, crazy finish, man. That 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 was brutal. That chair spot was brutal. Yeah, you got to be careful with that, man. After we saw. uh. What happened to Eddie Edwards in the Sammy Callahan match? Uh, whenever I see somebody, you know, setting themselves up on a chair like that, uh, I, I, the, the head in the chair thing, you get a little uneasy. It, it is nerve-wracking a little bit, man, especially Tommy. You know, he's a little older now, a little slower than he used to be. So uh, definitely a risky little thing, but um, but look brutal. Eli, Eli takes off to the back. Yep, he gets to the back. And uh, Kyle, just set this up a little bit. And let's and let's talk about this. I want to talk about what we went off the air with a little bit. Set it up, and let's discuss a little bit. So Eli Drake with his boat oar goes into the back uh, after the match, and something's waiting for him. It looks like uh, some balloons being weighed down with a little mini water bottle, and there's a little note for him. Uh, we don't get to see uh, what the note says. We don't hear any of it. You know, Eli just kind of reads it, reacts to it. Uh, you know, no way, walks away. Uh, what are you thinking, Trent? You know, I wasn't sure what to think until I saw somebody comment uh, earlier this week, and they said, "What if this is the return of decay?" And I'm like, "What do you mean? The balloons are eating. It's crazy, Steve? Uh, they've been waiting for Rosemary to come back, come back in." And Eli already has beef with Abyss. What if this is uh, some kind of thing for Decay? What do you think? 
Yeah, that- the balloons, Crazy Steve, going back to his clowny days. Uh, that's uh, that that that's a good good observation there. That makes sense. Uh, Decay is very hardcore. We know that. Uh, this is Eli Drake uh, crusading against the history of hardcore wrestling. Decay is very hardcore, so that could be uh, that that that's a good good guess there. Um, me personally, who I think it is. Yeah. Ah, man, I'm thinking a legend of ECW's past, a legend of Impact's past, uh, maybe a hardcore guy uh, we're not familiar with, somebody new, somebody debuting. Uh, maybe maybe we get somebody new that has a hardcore style to them. They want to challenge Eli Drake. I don't know. I really have no guesses here, man. All right. But I like that. I like the sound of Decay coming back. Could be. So it's a wait and see. But... So, yeah, dude, that's how you left the show, went off the air like that. November 29th, 2018 edition of Impact Wrestling. Kyle, this was a great show, man. A great show. Everybody was involved in this. You even had, like, you know, a, a big complaint last week a lot of people had was, you know, where was Killer Cross last week? I'm sure he was already off on his way after Thanksgiving or, for, you know, or after the, the tapings end, I should say. But, uh, you know, this was cool that you got the even he was off last week, but now you got a little bit. You got like a minute and a half of Killer Cross, but it's enough to keep him fresh in people's minds. So um, definitely a, a great episode. A lot going on. Impact Tribe, give us your thoughts. I want to hear what you guys think about this episode. Predictions. What do you think about where everything's going right now at this point? But uh, what was your highlight of the night, Trent? Oh, dude. <laughs> My boys, man, the Rascals, Rascal debut. I loved it. Personal feelings aside, uh, fandom speaking here, uh, what was your favorite part of the, the episode? Personal feelings aside, <laughs> you're, you're proud of your boys getting. I am. You know? My 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 favorite one was the follow and KM and, and just in in that subtle way that follow, follow was just like. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> like, Missed opportunity here, man. I would have uh, liked I to see tripped. them actually take KM and Fala into the casino and film that stuff. I got a feeling they got some of that down. I got a feeling some of that is recorded. Plenty of we'll more see. episodes to you know watch. Absolutely, absolutely. Plenty more, plenty more to go before uh, homecoming, man. So we're on a good route. This episode really set the tone for what's going to be a great pay per view. Viva Los so, Vegas. Um, no? I was saying I love I love the vibe of Viva Las Vegas. You know, I love the Sam's Town. I think Absolutely. Sam's Town looks great on TV. I, I I love that whole Sin City Vegas feel. We get that once in a while in wrestling, you know, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, that was the November 29th, 2018 edition of Impact Wrestling Kyle. On the road uh, to homecoming. We're on the we're on the road to homecoming. And uh we want to thank Everybody for joining us this week. Kyle, we had a pretty uh last week, even we did good in the ratings for a Thanksgiving episode. So obviously the listeners are really liking what we're doing. You got anything yeah, to say? I mean uh, and because of the Afro picture. Afro picture. But uh Kyle, that was November 29, 2018. You mind if I tell these people where they can find us, or you got something else to say? What was that old, uh, the Glad Bag commercial? It's like, plug it in, plug it in. Plug like it in, plug My mom likes saying that all the time. I don't know why. Maybe she, usually she's around my dad, though, when she says it. Go figure. But, uh, God. Uh, good Lord, what the hell did I just say? Right. You know, right. Those are your parents. <laughs> I'm like, supposed to say that, not you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right. I was just trying to make some website plugs here. Guys. You can find Total Nonstop Impact on Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and now Spotify. Please rate, review, subscribe on all of them. Let us know what you think. Let us know what we can do better. Give us all the feedback you can. Send us your Bob's and Vajana. Bob's and Vajana. Uh, also, you can find this review on the Impact Lounge on YouTube. Check it out. We are on. We are now being hosted by the number one source of Impact Wrestling news and discussion on the Impact Lounge. Uh, get up there, leave comments below the video. We read them, as you can see by the beginning of the show. We read them. 
we shout you guys out. We want to get to you know guys you guys. You guys are part of the show. This Absolutely. Is, this is our podcast. Like That's why we read the comments at the very beginning. You guys are just as much as part of this podcast as me and Trent are. God damn right. Kyle, you're spoken, spoken like a true gentleman there. But, uh, yeah, guys, what he said, do it. You know, get involved. We want to keep doing that. We want to keep growing the involvement. And I'm telling but, you, one day, Trent, one day, I'm, I'm telling you right now, and, and I'm talking to the tribe. I'm not just talking to you, Trent. I'm talking to the loungers, the listeners, the tribe, the Impact fans. One day, Kyle and Trent will go live, and we will have an open phone line. And all of you that write to us, your voices will be part of this show. One day, Trent. One day. I think we might. it might be sooner than later, man. We got uh, – there's some options. We can do some group chats and group hangouts or something. We'll look into it, guys. Kyle, me and Kyle are gonna we're gonna really research it a little bit. We can get a little bit of a. Uh, we're gonna get there, Trent. We are we'll going get to get there. I mean, we always talk about how much we love like talk radio and talk shows. Like, wouldn't it be great to just open the phone line to the loungers to the tribes? Oh, I would love it. I would love it, man. Hundred percent, love we'll get it. Get there, Trent. We'll get there. There you go. Well, yeah, man. That guys, that was it. Thank you very much for listening to the review for all the amazing feedback all the love and support you guys are fantastic please again leave all these comments whatever you got to say leave them on twitter and facebook type in we talk impact on the search and it comes right up uh kyle anything to add before i let these people go we've kept them quite a while quite a while go trey i don't want to go anywhere man we could sit here and talk all night what we gotta go for we could we got we gotta go I'm, I'm, i'm sick of you we got to go. What? Well, this, this is over. This, I'm sick of you for tonight. Okay? We got to go. Yeah. Hey, hey, screw you too, man. I'm out of here. All right. See you guys next week. Do-